Okay. I suffer from allergies. I am very allergic to pollens, and sometimes the situation gets complex for me. Concentrating at work is difficult, sleeping turns into a challenge, and breathing can get rather painful. Going through these respiratory challenges, I realized that breathing well is fundamental for a good quality of life, and this is something that we often take for granted. While my allergies are generated by outdoor pollens, similar symptoms like asthma, sore throat, dry eyes, itchy skin, difficulties in concentrating, and many others are triggered by indoor environments with poor air quality and incorrect humidity levels. We often refer to all these issues as the sick building syndrome. Just like humans, buildings breathe too. And when we prevent them from doing so, they can get sick. This is something that we often see in modern constructions. My name is Magda Posani. I'm a postdoc researcher and lecturer at the Chair of Sustainable Construction of ETH Zurich. I spent the last five years investigating how environmentally sustainable building practices can help us to construct more comfortable and healthier buildings. Now, I believe we can all agree that one of the main goals of construction is to provide people with a safe and comfortable environment. Then, how come that we ended up with sick buildings? And how come that we can see mold spread in one out of five energy-efficient houses in Switzerland? To understand how we got to this point, we need to briefly go through the historic evolution of construction techniques in Europe. In pre-industrial times, we used to construct with thick, massive walls made of stone or earth. These buildings were not insulated nor airproof, so they were a bit cold in winter and there were occasional air drafts inside. Yet, these constructions were extremely good at providing comfort during summer. Indeed, I guess that most of us already had the chance to enter in an old stone castle or church during a hot summer day and felt refreshed by the cool air inside. This is the typical summer benefit of traditional thick walls constructions. Then, in the late 18th century till the beginning of 20th century, we started to construct with thinner walls. This happened because the Industrial Revolution provided us with very effective materials, such as concrete and industrial bricks. The new materials gave us a lot of freedom in choosing the shape of our design for construction, but the thin walls led us to have colder buildings in winter. Also, we lost the summer benefits of traditional thick constructions. However, with the advent of heating systems and the large availability of oil, winter comfort was easily achieved with an unrestricted use of heating. And also, the slight summer discomfort was somehow accepted. Finally, in the 1920s, we faced a major oil crisis caused by oil shortage and a sharp increase in oil prices. This is when we started to change the way we construct. Now focusing on thermal insulation and energy efficiency. We transitioned to modern energy efficient construction. We kept the thin walls made of industrial materials and we added insulation and adopted an airproof design to minimize our heating consumptions. Also, we started to install air conditioning systems to provide for summer comfort. This is how we transitioned to modern construction. But this transition didn't come without challenges. The first challenge is related to the environmental impact of modern constructions. Using thermal insulation is very effective to provide comfort and reduce our heating demands. But the insulation materials that we use often have high environmental footprints. 
To give you an example, based on the KBOB database, which is the Swiss database for the environmental footprint of construction materials, using one kilo of industrial insulation has eight times higher environmental footprints than using one kilo of natural insulation based on straw. So what happened is that we transitioned, we switched our carbon emissions from the use of heating to the production of industrial construction materials. And this happened because at the time, our only focus was on oil and energy efficiency, not directly on the environmental impact of our constructions. There was also a second challenge related to the airproof design of our modern buildings. Airproof constructions are very convenient to reduce the heat losses due to air infiltration and air drafts, but they create a high need for mechanical ventilation. Indeed, when we are indoor and we work, talk, relax, or do any activity, we produce water vapor by breathing and sweating. If you think of buildings as airproof bubbles, the problem is quite clear. All this water vapor will be trapped inside the building, creating high humidity levels and leading to mold spread and unhealthy indoor conditions. The solution to this new problem was to intensify the use of mechanical systems for ventilation, so to regulate the inlet of fresh air in our buildings. Going back to our main question, how did we end up with sick buildings? As we saw in the historic evolution of construction techniques, we always responded to new challenges with new solutions, building up complexity. We ended up with highly energy efficient buildings, which are unable to provide healthy conditions unless we have an intense use of mechanical systems for ventilation and humidity control. Unfortunately, all these systems are complex to manage. And also, despite being energy effective, they are not necessarily environmental friendly. Indeed, they require the installation of many components, which can be carbon intensive to produce. For instance, based on my last year of research, I estimated that producing all the components that we need to install the dehumidification system in, a public, in the main room of a public library requires the same environmental emissions of producing 5,000 kilos of industrial bricks. This is about one small truck filled with bricks, which is a lot of material and a lot of environmental emissions. Now, we cannot go back in the past and change it, but we can look ahead and try to do better. Try to imagine how would it feel like to live in a modern building if we kept some features from traditional constructions? What if we kept the traditional walls made of stone or earth? These materials are not only very convenient to provide summer comfort, but they also have low environmental emissions. Indeed, based on the Swiss KBOB database, we can estimate that using one kilo of modern reinforced concrete has more than 10 times higher environmental footprints than using one kilo of stone or earth. So if we kept using traditional walls, we could have more comfortable and sustainable homes. Also, what if we kept on using traditional plant-based insulation, such as hemp and straw? Well, now we would have very well insulated buildings at a much lower environmental cost. What is more, natural materials such as earth and straw provide us additional benefits. First, they let the air pass through to some extent, letting the buildings breathe, as opposed to the air-proof bubble effect. Additionally, they have a moisture buffering capacity, meaning 
that they can absorb the water vapor from the indoor environment when indoor humidity is high, and then release it when conditions are drier. So these natural materials offer us not only the chance to implement a breathable design, but they even collaborate in improving indoor humidity levels. Now, given all these benefits, some architects have already started to construct with a breathable design and with natural low carbon materials. For instance, in 2023, Atelier Clerc designed the Atelier AHA. This building is located in northern Switzerland. It hosts the studio of an artist and it is built with thick, massive walls made of earth. Similarly, in 2018, on-site architecture designed La Maison Portou. This building is located in France. It is a multi-purpose public building and it has thick walls made of earth and a plant-based insulation. These two examples are a great representation of what a breathable and sustainable design can look like in new constructions. However, we have to consider that a large number of buildings have already been built. So, what do we do with them? We can renovate. Of course, in renovation, we have much less freedom than in new construction. But we still have options to implement a breathable design. For instance, we can focus on interior finishings. We can use earth plasters and plant-based panels. These solutions typically have low environmental footprint and also provide very good ability to regulate indoor humidity levels. What is more, we can even aim for higher humidity regulating performances by resourcing innovation. Indeed, research is moving forward to provide very highly performing solutions to be used in renovation. For instance, at the Chair of Sustainable Construction of ETH Zurich, we have been working on combining low-carbon moisture buffering materials with 3D printing. 3D printing enables us to create panels with optimized geometries, which in turn leads to extremely high performances in terms of humidity regulation. We studied these panels to be used in the renovation of a public library. And we estimated that using the panels to renovate the interior surfaces of the main room of the library can provide for the same comfort level as a dehumidification system. But they do so with three times lower environmental footprints. While research is moving forward to provide the best performance possible, we can already start acting now with simpler interventions. The solutions are already available, and they come from traditional knowledge, a breathable design and low-carbon natural materials. When constructing new buildings, we can take a step back from the complexity of mechanical systems for ventilation and humidity control. And we can rely on the use of thick, massive walls and a plant-based insulation. When renovating, we can use earth plasters and plant-based panels to finish the indoor surfaces of our buildings. As we reach the end of this talk, I would like to invite you to reflect for one last time about how the historic evolution of construction techniques led us to live in energy-efficient, air-proof, sick buildings. Now, Equipped with the combined wisdom from traditional construction and modern knowledge, we can start to rethink the way we build. We can construct and renovate with a new focus on health, health, comfort, and environmental sustainability. We can move from sick buildings to breathing buildings. Thank you.